Hi everybody, it's Nicolas Dorier. I will present you today the concept of pool payment and payouts uh, in BTC Pay servers. So I will start by a little bit of theory. Uh, traditionally, when you want to pay with Bitcoin, we use what we call push payments. Uh, it's a technical word that means that uh, the sender of the money is the one consciously taking the decision to push a payment to the receiver. So like an example, Alice want to buy something. Uh, Bob reply, okay, you can buy, send one BTC to this address and then Alice broadcast the transactions. So one thing that you should note is that th this model is basically what most of people are doing when they are using Bitcoin. But in the real life, uh, this is not the kind of uh, model that you are using. I will explain why. So the main problem with this model is that if you have lots of interaction with Bob, so imagine that I take this diagram, I put in horizontal, uh, in the horizontal axis, uh, this interaction, and you have a kind of repeated interaction between Alice and Bob. You have this kind of diagram. Uh, so you can see that every time like Alice wants to pay, she has to make a Bitcoin transactions, and. Uh, Every single time, like it's the same thing, then she needs to make a Bitcoin transaction. And the main ma major uh, problem with this model is that a Bitcoin transaction, okay, might be costly if the fees are high, but actually it's not really a problem. Even with nowadays where the fees are kind of high, it's not really a problem, you know. Uh, the main problem is that there is a high mental cost to do those kind of uh, those kind of interaction and actually even lightning network is not solving this main uh, user experience issues so the main issue when you do this kind of repeat payments is you have the mental cost of every time you have to open your wallet scan the QR code confirm it send it uh, it's kind of it, it's kind of block, blocking your customer to 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 buy something so the way, the way uh, people are solving this uh, currently, the best example I have is Bitrefill. So Bitrefill has this uh, concept of what I call, uh, so, uh, for what I call a prepayment. So instead of every time you want to buy a card on Bitrefill, except instead of every time sending one transaction, what you can do instead is just to do one prepayment. So you send, for example, you give them 0.1 Bitcoin. Every time you want to buy, you can basically skip the step of sending a transaction. Um, I, I think it's very, uh, it's a very important uh, user experience. It will be super cool if Bitrefill send us the number of people that are using it. Uh, but my guess is that lots of people are using this prepayment feature. It's just so easier to do to do it that way. Um, and uh, it works fine. Uh, of course, you have to do some to have some kind of trust with the person you interact with. But you know, like when you have some kind of repeat uh, repeat interaction, repeat relationship. Between you, uh, between the customer and the merchant, then the customer most of the time don't really uh, the the merchant don't really have any incentive to cheat the customer because this customer is like repeatedly buying. So I think I think this model is kind of fine. Uh, you know, the the concept of of a gift card is basically is using the same kind of system. Uh, but instead, what if we like, like if you try, for example, to use Amazon uh, and you don't really use gift card on Amazon, Amazon has another very good system, which is they basically take the money out of your bank account directly when you want to buy. They don't ask you your credit card number every time and it's very power powerful. So another example that I want to, to show you is like a, how you can you use normal normally when you use push payment not pull payment when you use push payment for paying a freelancer uh, this is how it goes traditionally speaking is that okay bob i want to work with you uh, bobby i want to work with you and then every time bob want to get uh, money basically they, they tell to alice oh please can you send me some money at this uh, at this address and i say okay i will send you money and send the money and then bob will say okay i work a little bit more and like you know, there is always this back and forth uh, between between the freelance, that is Bob here and, and Alice. 
And the more freelance you have, uh, basically, the more Alice has to keep up with this, uh, with this uh, flow. And every time there is this high mental cost of making one transaction for every Bob. So uh, even without talking about, uh, once again, even without talking about the, the, the transaction costs, uh, you, you still have this mental cost and lightning as, as is don't solve this issue. So what about instead of doing push payments, we have this same model as we can find in Amazon or actually there is another model. So for example, uh, recently I, I hired a freelance on a website that is called Upwork. Uh, it's a freelancer website and the way the model it's working is basically you enter your credit card and uh, you can say, okay, this freelance can draw money out of me up until, for example, one BTC per month, or like, uh, no, it's fiat, but like $1,000 per month or something like this. And what's happening is that the freelance are basically directly pulling the, ma the money out of the, uh, of the payer. It's very good because it, it takes away all this mental cost uh, of the pay that the payer need to, to, to do every time it's sending money. So the way we implemented it in BTCP server, uh, for now, Alice, there is still the mental cost of Alice pushing the broadcast transaction. So what, what's happening is that Bob and Bobby will basically, every time that they are doing some hour of work, they will try to pull the money out of Alice wallets. And the way we have do it right now is that Alice, for example, at the end of the month or at the end of the week will, uh, will Broadcast the transaction. One we will do one broadcast of the transaction to pay every uh, freelance that she has at once. So in a future version, I think we will have some kind of uh, possibility to have a bot, where, for example, every week this sort of broadcast is automatically done, and uh, well, Alice can always review this transaction if she wants to. So. We have a way better uh, diagram. So if I come back to the old diagram, there is lots of mental cost every time there is a payment. Uh, so this kind of like do one payment every week or every month is kind of decreasing this mental cost uh, a lot. And it's way more efficient for Alice. So that, that's basically the, the, the concept of, uh, of uh, pool payments. And I want just to talk about uh, quickly when when I talk about the concept of uh, prepayments, you know, at the beginning of this presentation. So pull payments can also be used from Bob's side when when uh, when uh, Alice wants to withdraw money from Bob. So from Bob's perspective, like a pull payment uh, can be used for implementing this kind of concepts because basically. Alice will want to pull money out of Bob whenever she wants and Bob want to approve one time and just send the money at once. So even from the concept of prepayment, this concept of pull payment can be used to implement that for Bob. Uh, but I, I will take another example where uh, pull payments are very useful is that for the concept of refunds and actually we're using this in BTC Pay Server. So how does a refund work? So you have Alice that say, okay, I want to buy this. Uh, she sent to Bob, blah, blah, blah. And then she decide I want a refund. And what's basically very often happen is that Bob say, okay, what, re what is your refund address? Then Alice reply BC1. And then Bob say, okay, what is the right? I need to reimburse her. Calculate this and like uh, do the, the broadcast transaction. And every time there is a one refund, it's always the same process that is taking long and that uh, that is, uh, for Bob very uh, taking lots of mental energy to do this. So the way we can, we can sort of uh, streamline this from, from Bob's perspective is that when Alice tell, tells to Bob, okay, I want a refund, then Bob can just say, okay, just refund. I just want a refund, uh, Alice. And Bob will just have a, a link that, that he, can, he can directly share with Alice. That is a pull payment and Alice will be free to pull the payment out of Bob whenever she wants. And then Bob later uh, can broadcast the transaction. And like if imagine that there is, for example, five or six customers to refund, it's not a problem. They all pull the money. Then Bob at the end of the month say, okay, I want to broadcast uh, this all at once. 
Uh, so it's, it's really decreasing the amount of work that Bob have to do. Uh, so there is a bunch of, uh, of idea that you can use for, for, for pool payment, for example, for a subscription service, uh, for refunds or time based ba billing. So it's what I show you for patronage. So it's very good. Uh, you know, like, uh, imagine that as a patron, um, as a, imagine that as a donator, you want to support lots of different, uh, Bitcoiners, uh, develop Bitcoin developers. So what if you, 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 you gave a pool payment to all the different contributors that you want to donate? So basically, all the contributors will be able to pull money out of your wallet every month at their, at their own pace. And you, at the end of the month, you just say, okay, I agree to send this amount of money and you broadcast the transaction and the payment to all the different uh, um, contributors that you want to fund. So it's very, it's very interesting. Uh, it can also be used uh, for exchanges. For example, imagine that you want to sell your Bitcoin, something that nobody do, but hypothetically you want to do it. Then you can just say, uh, you can just create a pool payment to your favorite exchange uh, uh, and it will allow the exchange to withdraw money from your wallet and automatically sell to Bitcoin uh, periodically, for example. So it's a very good uh, way of doing that. Uh, as a prepaid payment system, as I said uh, earlier, uh, if the merchant has the kind of prepaid account, the, uh, to allow Alice to withdraw it is actually a pool payment from the from Bob perspective. So you can use this concept as well to implement these kind of things. It's also time based, so you 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 can just say, okay, I want to send. 0.1 Bitcoin every month, and then every month, like the, the, the recipient of the pool payment would be able to only draw this kind of money. You, you can see the, the, the documentation here. Uh, and one thing to note is that we, we are exposing way more uh, about pool payment in our API than in our uh, user interface. Uh, so this will basically change in the next releases. But uh, right now the API is way more complete on what you can do with pool payment than, than, than the main interface. So here you have Alice on the top, uh, Bob on the bottom. And uh, what you want to do basically is uh, to simulate a payment from Alice to Bob and then uh, a refund from Alice to Alice. So let's go on Bob and try to create just a simple invoice, for example, 100 USD. Uh, I would choose on chain and I create my invoice. So here I have my invoice. I will give it to, to Alice. So here, hey, Alice, can you pay it? So Alice open it. Okay, I, I have this invoice, I want to pay it. So I would just simulate this. I will go to, I will go to the, to Alice wallet. And I will pay this invoice. This amount. Okay, sign with hot wallets. Broadcast it. Okay. So now I paid this invoice. So let's, let's imagine, for example, this invoice is completed. It has been, you know, it has been confirmed or whatever. And Alice say now, oh, please, Bob, can you, can you refund me, uh, the, the, this transaction? And you say, okay, no problem. Uh, so as Bob, you go to the detail of your transaction and then you click on issue refund and it will ask you just a simple question what amount do you want to refund do you want to refund the crypto pri the cryptocurrency price when the uh, at the rate when the invoice got paid uh, at the current rate or do you want to 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 refund the currency amount and like you will take the rate whatever when you want to pay back uh, the, the, the destination so you can choose this. Uh, later, we plan to implement a partial refund, but uh, we are still wondering of the 
good UX stuff to do these kind of things. But uh, okay, I will say, okay, I just want to, to, to use the current rate and I will create a refund. And here you can, it, it creates you this page that you can, that Bob can share uh, directly with, uh, with, um, with Alice. So I will copy this, I will send it to Alice. And Alice can say, can go to this page and say, okay, I can claim this amount of BTC and uh, okay, I will give them my address. So I will go in the wallet of Alice. So this wallet, uh, receive, I will create a new address. Okay, we found Alice will put the address, claim now. Okay. Now from, from, uh, from Bob's side, Bob will see that uh, if Bob come back to his instance of BTC Pay Server, he will see like a kind of a notification, oh, a new payout is waiting for payments. So a payout is basically one body that did, somebody that did one request to pull money, pull money out of your wallet. And what you're seeing here is like, okay, I have, I have one payout to process. It's this one is a refund of this invoice. Uh, do I want to do it? Okay. I click as Bob, I click it here. I confirm the selected payout and I can just sign it with a hot wallet and broadcast it done. So the interesting thing is that imagine that Bob had like lots of different payout at once, uh, it will be able to send it all at once. So ju just, uh, you know, the, this concept of refund is built on top of uh, pool payment, but you know, you can also create pool payments manually. So the user interface to create pool payments is right now very uh, limited on the UI part, but our, our API is way more, uh, is way more uh, complete. So manual pull payments. Imagine that I do a pull payment by hands. You know, I can do it by hands instead of doing a refund. I create 10 BTC pull payments. Uh, then anybody can can ask uh, to pull money. So you can see that this pull payments has a limit of 10 BTC. You can share this address with somebody that want to pull money out. And if uh, Alice want to pull, for example, one Bitcoin from the, their pull payment, she will say, okay, I, I work, for example, for one hour. I want one BTC. It's very well paid. And imagine that she, she, she work again. And uh, so she work again, for example, for 0.5 BTC and she tried to pull money out again. So what will happen on Bob's side is that there is two payout waiting. You can see it here. So if you go to his pull, pull payment page, you will see that, okay, it's a waiting to be paid 1.5 Bitcoin. Uh, you can go there directly to see them. You can select them all here and say, okay, I want to pay them all at once with the hot wallet. Oh, I, I, I don't have enough uh, testnet coin for doing this, but basically Bob will be able to pay everything at once. So it's very, uh, it's very efficient for him. So it's, uh, it's basically all I wanted to show and demo you uh, for this. Uh, we expect uh, we expect this interface to change in the future. We are waiting for the feedback. Uh, you know, it's a very new feature. It's a new way of interacting with Bitcoin. So I think it will take time for people to digest and use it and, and, do, uh, and even for us to do some kind of dog fooding. But uh, we are looking uh, forward for your feedback. And uh, once again, we thanks a lot for uh, all of our sponsors that allow like there are full-time developers to work on BTCP servers. Uh, thanks a lot to all and uh, see you for the next video.